show a couple of times yeah. and i want to introduce the first time guest on the math cast digger jones tell us about your show man all right my show is called digger and two guns news and views my co-host and i we basically tell our lives through the you know eyes of almost 40 year olds yeah. like one, one of the things that's tough about getting older is you know adjusting with the times and our show is just to help you adjust with that. It does help me adjust. I tell you, because we, we grew up together. Correct, um, correct. And I hear you talk about, you know, back in the day in the 90s, you know, growing up, going to school and all that, reminiscing about old times and then bringing it back to current. I'm like, damn, things change so much. But you, like, know, what's, you know what's funny about the whole thing is? What's that? Like... When you think that 1990 was 30 years ago, I my brain can't seem to fathom that. No, not because at all. That's almost the same as when we were growing up, us saying 1970. <laughs> you know, call, calling them boys old, right? <laughs> right, calling them old. And now we are those people. And what yeah, I think man. is cool about it is we didn't see ourselves transitioning into these people. It no. just happened. Not at all. You know it's, what I mean? It's crazy. <clears throat> it's, like, it's like a, oh, I ahead. listen to music these days, uh-huh. and these mumble ass rappers. Right. I feel like my parents. I'm like, I don't know what the hell they're saying. Right. <laughs> and I never thought of us at that point. Like, I'm gonna give you a funny story. All right. Um, about a month and a half ago, I was at the grocery store. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had two cases of water, and these two teenagers walk up to me. He's like. Oh, no, no, old school, we got you. I'm like, huh? <laughs> they put the water in my trunk for me. I said, like, yeah, man, that's a nice Jesus piece you got, old head. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> and when I got in the car and I'm turning on the, you know, turning the car on, I'm like, damn, I actually graduated to old head. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I never thought I'd see the day where I would become old school. Man, it's crazy, though. Like, you got kids and all that. Like, yeah. Man, like my daughter, how old you? Ni- my daughter, my oldest is going to be 19 next month. Shut the hell up. I kid you what? not. She's going to be 19. I have my first child at 20. Damn, man. I yeah, you old. <laughs> but I started young so I could vacation sooner. <laughs> oh, that, w- that was your plan? That's the plan. <laughs> Hold on. That was your plan? No, that wasn't that was really your my plan. plan. That, that wasn't was really plan. No, that wasn't really my real plan. It just happened. <laughs> I, I remember, you know what? I, I don't want to take too much away from the show. I remember the first time my um, ex-wife told me that she was pregnant with our child. It was just one of those moments where I said the wrong thing at the wrong time. I said, uh, so what you going to do? Oh, wrong shit. thing to say. <laughs> did, did you get your face slapped? No, I didn't get my face slapped. She She just like started this whole crying shit and I was just like, now you just man. emotional right now. You gonna be all right. We gonna be all right. You know. <laughs> oh man, you was a dick. <laughs> I, I was, man. I was, but <laughs> we we get better with age. We're like wine. Speaking I mean, of, some of us do. Not everybody. I was gonna say, look, some of the people we went to high school are aging like milk. Yo, I am so, not <laughs> no names. Yo, so I remember listening to the show you had B. Ross on, and y'all talking about like. You know, people from high school, man, look, I scroll through the Facebook because, you know, we don't have class reunions, you know, right? like right. why Why do we need it? Because we, we follow everybody on Facebook and I right. scroll through, I'm like, yeah, damn, life did not treat you well. Right. And <laughs> like some of these people are literally aging like milk and I'm just in there looking at some of these people like, uh, I don't mm. want to call her name, but we went to high school with her. I'll tell you off the books or off the, you know, off the record. So she is, you know, a panhandler right by the fairgrounds, right? Damn. And, you know, I rolled, I had my windows down, and all of a sudden all I heard was, Daniel? I'm like, yeah. 
Daniel Laurie? I'm like, yeah. She goes, oh my God, it's me, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, holy fuck. Here, <sighs> take this $5 bill. You need it more than I do. And don't spend that shit on drugs because you look yeah. rough. Wow. And That's sad. It is sad, but the thing about it is, and like I said on um, the podcast where we had B. Ross on, sometimes I can't feel bad for some of these people because they had better opportunities than we did. You got a point there. You got a point. Don't get me wrong. I grew up in the suburbs and shit like that. And, you know, I'm not saying that life was peaches and cream, but I had it good. Like, if I failed, that was on me. And some of these people were better off than we were. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. And the fact that they fell the fuck off, you're just like, damn, you had an opportunity way better than I. What the fuck happened? I don't know. It's the decisions that... I guess the look. I made some bad decisions in my twenties. We all um, oh man, so bad. <laughs> but I, I was lucky and blessed to have people around me, you know, to, to pick me back up and say, "Hey, knucklehead, you fucking up. Do better." Right. And I maybe, the maybe they didn't have that. I had the same thing. Yeah, but there's one thing I did want to talk about on your podcast. All right, I have two high school, well, two memories that included you Uh oh (laughs) so one was a high school one one was a francis marion one oh shit okay cool look now let me before you do that let Uh, me give a disclaimer i my memory is so bad i forgot (laughs) a lot of things when i was younger so this might be yeah i I, I, I remember i remember that but you know the stuff in between (laughs) gotcha 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 i gotcha I was on so, that stuff. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. What, one of my favorite high school memories that included you is after school, we didn't ride the bus, right? Right. Because yep. we had parents that cared about us that picked us up from school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we actually had parents that cared. <laughs> so well, I rode the bus some now. I, no, we rode, I rode the, the bus, bus some. We, we rode the bus in the morning, but in the afternoon, my mom didn't want us on the bus because Mark oh, had a yeah. mouth. Mark had a yeah. mouth and always cursed out the afternoon bus driver. We don't know why, but that was Mark. Uh, shout smart. out to my brother. Shout out to my brother, by the way. What's up? So, remember after school, there was this like picnic table that sat on the, if you were leaving Stratford and you walked directly to the right side, there was a picnic table. Yeah. It was myself, you, Philip Allen, Nate, <laughs> my sister, my brother, and Philip Pinkney. Yep. So, we were all sitting there, you know, lollygagging, talking, and out of nowhere, Philip Pinkney and my brother ended up getting on the golf cart, and they rode it towards Burger King. Well, what was Burger <laughs> King? It's now a Sonics now. Oh, man. Wow. <clears throat> and, and they rode it towards Burger King. Yep. So, all of a sudden, you see, the, <laughs> you see, there's about five, ten minutes later, my brother and P- Philip Pinkney, they parked in golf cart where it was and they stand right beside it. We're like, what the hell happened with y'all? <laughs> and Mr. M- and Mr. McCracken and another um administrator pull up on the golf cart and was just like, you know, y'all stay right there. What were y'all doing on the golf cart? This and so they concocted a story that a Mexican kid took the golf cart and they chased him down <laughs> towards Burger King. <laughs> Shut the hell up. <laughs> And they chased it down towards Burger King and they got the golf cart back. <laughs> oh, shit. But they were so convincing in their story. Like, in the way that uh, Mark and Philip were coaching us, too, like, didn't that happen? Didn't, you know, wasn't that kid wearing a white shirt? They were like, yeah, sure was. <laughs> but the way they coached us through the story was so funny. Yeah. Man, so, like, that was crazy and, times, like I said, man. This was this was the era before camera phones and before they had cameras on the outside of campus. So your word was your bond at that time. Yo, do you remember when they set the vice principal's car on fire? No, I don't. You remember? Okay. I, I forget his name. He was a redhead, um, redhead guy. I, and I, um, we didn't like him. You remember his name? No, I said, I remember who you're talking about. Yes, man. So it was during it was during class. It wasn't at the school. <laughs> it, for whatever reason, came over there to come. I don't know if it was Mr. McCracken or Miss Jennings. I don't know. But 
they were trying to find out who the hell set this dude's car on fire. They put something in the tailpipe, I think it was. <laughs> I wait, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. And it's and you know what's funny? It's not the fact that we were all bad kids. The thing was we were doing shit that teenagers do. Yeah, man. We had fun. It's not like we was doing those bomb threats. <laughs> Oh no no no! Oh, can can I talk about bomb threat week? Yeah, please do, because that shit was annoying. <laughs> bomb threat week was your senior year. Yeah, the year we won the state championship in football. So yes, I can actually say his name now because you know there's no incrimination factor. <laughs> My friend John T. Bowman was the one calling in the bomb threats. For real? I'm dead ass serious. Oh shit! So he was the one calling in the bomb threats. And where he fucked up was he would do it from the same place towards the same time every day. Right. So they finally, you know, caught on and linked on to it. They were just waiting him for him to go to the payphone, which the payphone was right outside the speedway by Stratford. He was that close? He was that close. Hold on. That's my work phone real fast. Fuck it. I'm not answering right now. <laughs> but um, but um, he was that close. Yes. So the first couple of days, it was bomb. It was fun. You know, just like, oh, yeah, you know, bomb threat. Woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was fun. A-, a little. It was fun. After day we, we was up there chilling and shit, you know. After day three, we're just like, all right, cool. You know, this is getting kind of redundant, but. We got this. Yeah. Two weeks of this shit, dog. <laughs> We're like, oh, yeah. come the fuck on. Didn't he do that one time when it was raining outside? We had to yeah. stand in the goddamn rain. It was raining, yes. Yeah, man. That, that, that shit was annoying at that point. It was like, yeah, we're done. We're yeah, done. And, and the thing about it was, John Taylor would be like, all right, man, same time, you know, same place, same time. I was like, man, don't come. <laughs> like, <laughs> like the shit was cool like the first three or four days, but two weeks. Uh, yeah, he ran out, man. You know, people just run out. That's what they do. They run out, man. All right, so, so, so t- tell me about this whole um, other memory that you have at Francis Marion. I, I probably, it might be the first time I hear this. All right, so Francis Marion, my sister, you know, she went, right? Right. We so, were actually in the same building. We correct. Lived in the same building. Yeah. Correct. So, this is right before I went to Job Corps. I wanted to spend time with my um, siblings. Right. So, Mark stayed at the house, but my sister was off to school. Mm-hmm. So, my sister said, I tell you what, why don't you come to Francis Marion for a week and you can stay, you know, with me in my room? I'm like, wait a minute. You want me to stay in your room on a girl's wing? She said, yeah, nobody really walks the hall. Sure and I'm cool, <laughs> you know, I'm cool with the person who, you know, does the monitoring. So it'll be cool. Right. I'm like, yeah, sure. I got that. So the first couple of days I stayed in her and her roommate. Um, I think her name was Elisa or Eliza. Spanish chick. Yeah. I remember she was Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. I stayed in their room. I'm like, nah, I can't stay in here. So my, <laughs> my sister's like, oh, well, <laughs> this is too much, right? Yeah, my sister's like, CL's down the hall. You can hang out with him. So I hung out with you for a little bit, right? Yeah. And I was sitting there, like, downloading music on your computer, and I was, like, really getting, you know, under your skin and annoying you, right? I w- you were? Yeah. <laughs> you got to the point where you're just like, look, dog, you're cool and all, <laughs> but leave my computer alone. Better yet, go back to your sister's room. I'm like, damn. like, <laughs> Oh, shit. I, Cause, cause damn. I wanted to. I wanted to be around guys because me being a male on that side of the hall, you know, on the female side of the hall, my sister was getting a lot of unwanted knocks on her door and people wanting to hang out in the room because there's a guy there. And yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was crazy at Francis Mary, man, because, you know, they had three floors where right. we were. Uh, the first, I think the first floor might have been just the first floor was the guy's floor and the other two were females. And um, right. nobody would walk. So they, we would put like um, 
I think it was a checker or a, a large enough coin to prop the door open because you had to get in with a key. And yeah, right. people just come in there and just knock on the door. Like, Don't give a shit. I didn't, right. man. I, I'm sorry I kicked you out, man. No, no, man. no. But the thing about it was, I think what it was is you were tired. And it's like one o'clock in the morning. You're wanting to go to bed. And like I said, I'm just there on leisure. This is right before y'all's Christmas break, too. I'm oh, there on man. leisure. Yeah. So. Damn. And it was just sorry like, about that, my bad. No, I'm sorry about don't, that. Don't don't apologize. Like I said, man, it was just one of those things where you wanted to go to bed, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to go on back on that side. And but you're just like, yeah, man, I'm gonna go ahead and open the door for you and everything. So if they ask anything, you we could just say you're going back to your car or something. But you gotta go. Oh man, <laughs> do you remember who my roommate was at the time? Was it Tommy Rayner? Nah, um, so it was well, either down the hall. it was either um Brad Sponick or no, it was Brad Sponick. It was the yeah. I thought so. it was yeah. Brad Sponick because Tommy was down the hall. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. You know, I blacked out a lot in my twenties. You know, you know, um, you know. No, it was like I said. I, what I think it was is I think you were tired. Probably from partying too much. I think you're tired and you're just like, yo, man, like, you got to roll, man. Like, it's cool hanging out with you and everything, but you got to go. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. You know, I forget how long we knew each other because I used to hang at, at your house um, at the school a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Killing uh, web TV. <laughs> the web TV. Yeah, there was a web TV there. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Remember that shit. There was a web TV there. You you remember? I do, man. Oh, wow. So yeah, man. like oh, shit, the, man. But like I said, it's just funny how time is flying. And like I said, we're gonna be forty next year. Yep, I'm gonna and be forty like, in March. It's crazy. I'm, I'll be forty in May, and my mind can't wrap myself around this. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know if you have this, but. The closer I get to 40, I have these weird aches and pains that last for like half a year. And it's not enough to go to the doctor for, but right. it's enough to be like, ah, oh, shit, this is uncomfortable. But all of a sudden, it just fades away. You know, it just goes away. away. It no, it doesn't fade away. It transfers somewhere else. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so like, ah, oh, damn, my foot's not hurting no more. But damn, this pain in my shoulder. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Then you try like, how did that shit happen? Did I sleep bad? What? What? what you know, so you, my wife and I talk all the time. Like, hey, so um, what happened to your shoulder? I don't know. I don't know. Did you kick me into sleep? <laughs> right. So, and then you sit there buying um, buying things that you never thought you'd buy, like damn Ben Gay and heating pads and shit. <laughs> oh, dude, the heating pads. Oh, the struggle's real, man. Struggle. Like, I have like four heating pads. Then you got massage chairs and shit. Yeah, like, and I'm that old man that goes in the mall and sits in the massage chair and, like, puts $20 in. And I'm just like, oh, man, I'm not leaving this chair for 30 minutes. Well, nigga, you can't because you put your $20 in. Right. And then you end up drooling and you wonder, like, oh, people watch me drooling and shit. <laughs> yeah, and I'm that guy that falls asleep on, you know, like at family functions. Oh, damn, for real? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm that one guy that just sits in the corner chair and People are talking to me, and I'm just like, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What, whatever he said. And I'm going right back to sleep. Oh, That's man. Me. Yeah, you know, it's nice getting old, though. I like it. I because feel like I have experience. I can talk to these young heads out here, and I can say, hey, don't do that. Not that they listen. And I, right. you know, I <laughs> expect them to because we were hard heads too with some subject matter. But at least I, I'm like, oh, I, I, I've been through this. I tell you what not to do. Now, if you go ahead and do it, go ahead. You can't say I didn't tell you, but I feel obligated to kind of counsel these young boys. Like my nephew, I got two nephews. Um, right. And I, I talked to him like, hey, man, you shouldn't do that. I've been through that. So you wouldn't have to go through that. It's like a Jay-Z line. <laughs> right. It's crazy and, and shit. 
And um, I always say I'm blessed to be an old head due to the simple fact that sometimes you just don't think that you're going to, you know, make it this long, especially nowadays with shit like COVID and heart disease and diabetes. and <laughs> oh, COVID was crazy, man. Like, Yo, lot... oh, I want to ask you something. What's that? How do you think Joe Biden's doing? Oh. <sighs> One thing I hate talking about is politics, but let's just get into it. I think yeah. Joe Biden came in with good intentions. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm trying to word this as delicately, delicately as possible without sounding like an ass. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. Talk freely. He's like that stepfather that comes in and gives you all these empty promises. But you're waiting for him and your mom to split. <laughs> That's how I see Biden. Oh, like everything was all good during the election. You know, this is yeah. what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. We're going to start paying back towards some towards reparations. We're going to start, you know, giving X Y Z to historically black universities and stuff like that. Yep. But what has actually happened? Not much. Oh. Cool, we got a stimulus check. That's yeah. Cool, right? But we got that during Trump. <clears throat> uh, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> a lot of people just like, well, Biden gave us a stimulus check. Do you not realize the first stimulus check came from Trump? Yeah. I mean, so, but he just kept it going, you know? We only got one from him, right? Only got one, you know? Correct. I'm not no beggar, but I'm like, hey, man, you know, people still dying out here. <laughs> And is that- I know you're trying to get the economy going, but I mean, y'all got to chill, man. You know, I'm getting in my car again. I'm sorry about the little ding noise. It's all good. But um, like I said, he's the guy who came in with good intentions. Mm-hmm. But why are you so close to my ass? Excuse my language. <laughs> who is close no, to your ass, dude? There's a car that's literally parked in my yard. So I'm trying to back out and like, I don't know if this is the neighbor's car or, but anywho, but one thing that I wanted Biden to do was just at least keep up with your promises of the first year. And year number one is ending what? In January. Yeah. So just keep up with the promises of your first year and you're nowhere even close to that. Not even in the vicinity. Yeah, it's like <clears throat> it's the, the promises that you planned on. You know, we're going to cut the deficit X, Y, Z, but yet you're adding more to the deficit by trying to, you know, keep up with these payments. We're going to sit there and I keep on going back to the historically back black colleges because that's what he was preaching. And remember when he was like, if you don't vote for Joe Biden, <laughs> I remember that shit. Ooh, you know, that wrote people the wrong way, didn't it? Not only did it run people the wrong way, they're just like, look, if we vote you in, you keep up with the promises that you say you're going to do. And that hasn't came into fruition. No, it hasn't. Like, you, you came into office on, you know, and mm-hmm. this is sad to say, I'm a Democrat talking about my president like this. I am too. Is, I mean, who but we got to keep it real. Who, who's Democrat? Yeah. But we got to keep it real. But you're not, he's not shielded from, from criticism, you know, oh no, just because I, we voted for him. I talked about um, Obama when Obama was messing up. Yeah. And just the simple fact that, you know, like, you know, America's got to live. America's got to do this. Here's the thing that bothers me. You have national deficit for the, na- you know, National Cowboy Fund of America, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we're putting money into. Like, have you ever seen what the country's really putting money into? No, like uh, some some very outlandish things. Like we have a um, like a magician's museum in Georgia. Shut up! <laughs> no, I kid you. It sounds ridiculous, but I kid you not. This is true facts. Who's on the board, David Copperfield? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we're putting our money. Do you realize minimum wage has not been raised since Bush? Yeah. 
Bush yeah. two, that is. It's crazy. Yeah. But Bush the doing, price yeah. of inflation and the price of goods are going up. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's like, like I, I don't know. It's it's like he, he here's two things. So you had Trump, which was an, a major asshole all day, every day. Um, he was fucking up, sure. Um, but we knew what we were going to get. You know, he told you who he was. We knew what we were going to get. He just made us feel like we need to be on another planet. Right. But, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, the pandemic happened. Black Lives Matter movement really took off. And all the protests happened. Crazy shit with that. We already know. We ain't got to rehash that. And then we had hope from, from Biden. We didn't want Biden. We want somebody else, but that's who we got. And we were like, all yeah. right, we need to get Trump out. So we're we going to ride with you, Biden. I hear you talking over here. I hear you talking promise on all this stuff. Yeah, 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 you're a politician. We voted, we voted, and people voted in the masses. The mail-in ballots came out of nowhere. <laughs> but we got Biden in, and you know, we were rid of Trump and our, our mental state is is great. Twitter took him down. Facebook took him off and all that stuff. We're going about our lives. We don't have to watch the news every day or anything that we do. It is it, We don't hear Biden's name in it. You know, it's different. There's a different contrast. But right. now we're back to that old politician type thing is you gave us empty promises. Right. Now we got to deal with that again. But we were right. hoping that we didn't have to go back there because if you go back before Trump, you had, you know, everybody has their flaws, but Obama was that dude. Obama fulfilled all this stuff. And people not, all, be, not all the stuff. He, I would say he yeah, fulfilled got a point. 80%. There was just some, there were just some things that he couldn't push through because he needed help from other people. And, and they the didn't thing give about it, to it him. is you need help from the Republicans. Republicans says, I'm not touching that shit. That's right. We, um, yeah. Yeah. We good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's so, the thing. So it, in turn, it made him look bad. Yeah, it did. And I know people out there are going to say, oh, give Biden a chance. This is his first year. You know, he's he's repairing the economy. You know, it was kind of like how Obama was when, Bush, you know, when Bush went out. I get that. I get that. I get that. But. Like, let's just use Obama. Mm -hmm. Do you know to fix Bush's mess, it only took him eight months. Yeah. It took eight, him eight months. months of, you know, diligence and, you know, hard work. Sometimes it seems like Biden's asleep at the wheel. I'm not going to sit there and lie. And like you could call him Sleepy Biden. <laughs> Sleepy yeah. Joe. <laughs> Sleep, he seems like Sleepy Joe for real. It yeah. Seems like yeah. He's asleep at the wheel waiting for, you know, other things to happen. And yeah. one thing that really bothers me is what do we hear about Vice President Harris? Nothing. Exactly. Nothing. Just chilling. She don't even when, play rap music no more. When when Biden when <laughs> Biden was vice president, what happened? We heard about Biden going overseas, doing peace treaties, doing this, doing that, so on and so yeah. on, right? Mm hmm Sometimes people forget Harris is the vice president. I actually do sometimes. I, I do forget sometimes because she's that's so. The problem. She's she. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. But but you got to think about it now. Sometimes they're supposed to be in the shadows and you'd not heard from. You got to think about Biden. You didn't hear a lot of, from him when he was um, vice president. Do you know why? Um, because we sent Biden overseas to repair our relationships. It's true. So what is Harris Barack, doing, though? Barack did everything on the home front. You know, hey, look, I'm going to do this. I need you to go here, do this treaty, talk to these people, and this is what we need. We yeah. don't even hear of her going anywhere. We don't know if she lives in a White House. I don't even know her <laughs> husband's name. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That dude, whoever. Exactly. I don't know. Because, you know, yeah. when, um, when Biden was vice president, we heard Jill, 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 Jill. We knew who the fuck yeah. she was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree. You know, the thing is that that has me worried is that 2024. Trump's going to come back if he's still alive. <clears throat> no, he'll, no, he's going to come back for sure. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm not going to say he was a complete shit 
president. But every promise that he's made, I'm going to get us more money for this. I'm going to do this. With the exception of the wall, has almost been fulfilled. And and the coal mines. He didn't help them. He didn't help them. That's move. true. That's true. <laughs> but you know, he left them but, hanging. But he's saying we needed. I mean, he needed support from you know, a, a Mexico for the wall, and needed yeah. needed support from the union for the mines. Yeah. <laughs> So everything that he couldn't accomplish was almost out of his control. Yeah, and, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that he didn't finish the wall. I'm, I'm, I, I was hate, not rooting for him on that one. Listen, I hate giving this guy credit, but I do give credit where credit's due. When Trump says, hey, look, I'm going to get you Americans some money to help out with bills. I mean, it was only $1,400, but still. Hey, it was something. So now that Biden's like, I want to get money, you know, people money every year. If you don't have kids, what are you capitalizing on? Because you yet. have no children, correct? Not yet. No. Do you have? Do you get that five hundred dollars a month for assistance? Hell no. Do you know why? Why? <laughs> because this is the stipulations that Biden gave. If you're going mm. to give the nation five hundred dollars a month to help assist with this COVID. Give it to everybody. Don't give it to people as a tax loan for, you know, their earned income credit. Your earned right. income credit is what's earned for having children. Right. The people with children just aren't the only ones needing help. To exactly. live in a damn two-bedroom apartment. Not, mind you, I did not say house. In an apartment, you have to make over $3,200 a month. There are people yep. who don't make that. Oh, many people that don't. <clears throat> oh, yeah. And this is net not this is what you take crazy. home there are some people that don't make that it's crazy i'm in a i'm in a medical field and don't get me wrong i'm blessed to make what i make but if i didn't have a roommate i'd be really living hand to mouth with no room you know, for injury the richest country in the world and we room. treat people like shit <laughs> not only are we the richest country in the world we have more assets and opportunities than anybody. Yeah. We You're do. telling me that we can't afford free health care. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to think about it. The, the system was designed and in so in, uh, in, entwined with each other, with the money payout and the corruption, that they can't redo the system the way that we need it to be. We can't have the universal health care because there's so much money in, in lobbying. You got to get real. You got to take the money out of politics. Make any of that stuff come to fruition. Okay. Until they do, it ain't gonna happen. But you got to look at countries like France, where the top dog or the highest earner gets almost what they call village tax. Hmm. And village taxes tax the the amount of money that they take out of taxes can feed a village for almost ten years. You look at America, look at somebody like Damn. Jeff Bezos. Do you know Jeff Bezos' net worth? Oh, yeah. He, he goes back and forth of being the, the richest man in the world. $191 billion. And there's many times, most of his adult years, he didn't pay taxes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So everything that he's earning, he's pocketing and paying less than 1%. Yeah. Let that marinate for a quick second. That's crazy shit, man. How many people are there in the United States? Uh, I think it's a good 500 million, if not more. Nope. In the United nope. States, we have 8.6 billion people. You mean in the world? I mean, oh, excuse me, in the world. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm oh, sorry. I wait. United States. I said United States. I, I apologize. Yeah, you did. <laughs> But there are 8.6 billion people in the world. Yeah. Blah, this blah, man blah. can get almost $10 and not make a dent in his riches. It's crazy, man. Let that That's marinate. That's crazy. That's crazy. This man can give people $10 a piece. Can I get one rib? <laughs> can I get can I one rib? Can I can I make my hands in a cup and drink? 
but that's the shit that we think about because we're getting older. We're thinking about our future, right? You know, we weren't thinking about this shit when we were little. No, you know. But then again, you gotta understand when we were little, the price of living wasn't as up as it is now. It sure damn ain't. So Good I remember, Lord. I remember getting my first, um, my first house was a trailer, right? Yep. And you know, like everybody said, like, "Oh man, you used to live in a trailer park." So the fuck what? Do you know my rent was four hundred dollars a month? Uh, I'll take it. And I was complaining. Oh yeah, <laughs> you were. Do you know what my rent is now? How much? Fifteen hundred. I mean, you... Hey man, let me tell and, you. And you know, you know what I say? Damn man, if I had that four hundred dollar rent with my additional nine hundred dollars, I'm telling you, man. I, I I literally look at I make a I make pretty good because I'm in the, the the technical field. Right, you're. But um, I'm, I'm gonna say you, you're a tech spec as we call them. Yeah, I'm a product manager, so I make pretty good. But as much bills as I got, I'm like, hey man, come on man, come on, come on now, come on now. But like you, everything. But do you know what America's problem is? And I found myself guilty guilty of this also. The more money we make, the more bills we give upon ourselves. Yeah, man. And let me t- let me tell you what I mean by that. So once I got my medical job, whatever, whatnot, I used to have a 2012 Chrysler 300, right? Fully loaded. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fully loaded. The highest payment on that was 420 a month. And, you know, like, I'm sitting there complaining. So once I got a job in the medical field, oh, I'm making how much a month? Yo, let me go and get that charger right there. <laughs> That's so my payment went from damn 425 to 720 a month. Ooh. Because I'm making more money. But I didn't realize that when that payment goes up, your insurance goes up. Hell yeah. Sure so does, my, buddy. So let's just go and say that's nine hundred dollars, right? How much did I yeah. say my rent was? Oh, Fifteen yeah. hundred, right? Yeah. You know the bad part about it is? But we haven't even scratched the surface on utilities, gas, food, or anything of that nature. You ain't even eat yet. <laughs> exactly. So that's that's America's problem because America's problem is what we see on TV. You want the fast car. You want that's it. Right. It's a sign of wealth. That's right, I know man. I make this money. I want to show people, hey, look, this is what I can afford. That's right. This is what I got. We're conditioned. But you know the funny thing about it is? What's that? If you go to my house right now and you look at my fridge, it looks like a trap house. <laughs> oh shit! You know what my you know what my fridge is called? The condiment cooler. Oh shit! You got a whole bunch of ketchup, mustard, and shit in ketchup, there. Ketchup, mustard, Mayonnaise. crackers, cans of tuna. You know. <laughs> That's how you stay so skinny. Now we know. No, no, no. I, I eat. I eat. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong or twisted. I eat. But you know, like. My parents live down the street. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I got the cheat code for that shit. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, I used to do that, and then I moved the state away. I'm like, eh, God damn, I missed that shit. You know, right. I used to do my laundry over at my mom's house on the right. weekend. Oh, yeah, we didn't even factor expenditures like soap, dish soap, you know what I mean? Dish soap. Clothes soap. Trash bags. You know, detergent. Yeah, we didn't count those expenditures yet. Man, you get those. You get those like um those tabs, the dishwasher and the washing machine tabs. Right. Man, that's expensive, man. Fifteen dollars. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Fifteen dollars for how many? Two hundred. Let me think about this real fast. If I wash my dishes twice a week, you know, just <laughs> you'd be like, hey, wait until that thing is full. Don't run that shit. Don't run and that that's, shit. That's what I do. And I buy paper plates and shit. That's right. But paper but, plates cost a lot too now. And you're like, God damn, then you fill up the trash bags. It's a trickle down, man. You know what I'm saying? Ten dollars for two hundred. <laughs> hey, thank God for the wholesale clubs. I, I just say that. And, oh, hell I, yeah. And you know oh, what's yeah. funny? We're we're older and we're talking about wholesale clubs, and it's just like you That's just preach you just preach the good sermon. You said thank God for the wholesale clubs, and I swear I heard the organ go dun 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 dun. dun, dun. <laughs> Yo, I I knew that I was legit getting older when I walked into the Costco and I'm like, oh shit, I needed to be here right now. I I feel these people struggle. 
I'm stay. I'm like dodging through the lines and stuff, going through it like, hey, move out the way, lady. I'm trying to get that toilet paper. You know that right. big ass thing of toilet paper. I'm like, oh, I made it now. I finally got the big ass thing of toilet paper. Right, and you, you know how you know what my aha, I made it moment was. That my aha, I made it moment was when I sat there and I'm sitting there putting back the 485 um, ground beef for the store, getting the one that says 387. Yes, it looked about the same quantity. Just a that's, little, like, that's what I said. I was like, like, you know, it's, it's just me eating at the house. Hamburger helpers, you know. I can live off a hamburger helper for three days, but if I'm going to live off a hamburger helper for three days, let me just go ahead and get the one day. You know what I mean? Because, <laughs> like, <coughs> excuse me, some of this shit's going to get thrown in the trash anyway because I don't eat it all. Right. This is just way too much for me. <laughs> hey, you remember you remember when you was growing up and your parents got the generic brand and you're like, fuck that. I don't want that. Now you be like, hey, you better get that generic brand. Right. I'm not. I'm not certain if you listened to my... No, you did listen to my podcast the other day where I was talking about Toastums. Oh, hey, Toastums was busting, man. They they just had, like, the little hole cutouts, like, a little different. But yeah. Fuck tart, man. Fuck it. <laughs> it on. toasted just the same. This person said, I added the stop on to your route. Why are you doing this to me, lady? Oh, man. That's disrespectful. Why are you doing this to me? I don't know. I added the stop on to your route. Don't do that, lady. It's after six o'clock. I'm I'm supposed to be off the clock. They do you wrong, man. They do you wrong. But yeah, man, toastums, toastums be bussing, man. You know what I'm saying? I, oh yeah, trust me, I know. Man, I tell you, sometimes I I regress and go back to, um, but you gotta think about it. Like, you get um spices and and sauces and stuff like that, right? Right. Even with the ketchup, you like, hey man, put that Heinz back. You better get that good, that great value, man. Don't, hey, hey, and you gonna true. put it with mustard? You ain't gonna tell the difference. It's true. Like, there's been many moments where my children's like, "Well, why can't we eat?" I said, "Until you start paying for groceries." <laughs> exactly. Now I get it. <laughs> like, until you start paying for groceries, you put that back. That's right. You be but, putting shit in the buggy. You're like, hey, can we get this? No, put that shit back. No, unless you throwing in for this. You, you, are you putting in for this? No. All right. I'm no. gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you something that. Oh, turn down my GPS. Being loud and disrespectful right now. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you like how I knew that you know my parents were kind of cheap, but I didn't want to say anything. So you know I have a best friend named Adam. Adam Barrett, right? Yeah. So when I spent the night at Adam's house, yep. see, I tried to make Adam, I tried to play Adam like he was a broke one. <laughs> but what I did was we were spending the night at his house, right? Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at his cereal on top of the fridge and everything, right? And I'm like, man, why do your cereal come in a box instead of a bag? <laughs> He's like, wait, cereal in a bag? I said, yeah, your cereal comes in a box. Your cereal comes in a bag, brokey. But we didn't know we were, <laughs> we didn't know we were broke, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And you know the bad part about it was? My parents weren't broke. They were just frugal. Hey, that's how they kept their money. They 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 put it in places where it really mattered. You know? Like, like the light my, bill. My parents weren't <laughs> broke at all. Yeah, they put it they put it where the money was what needed to be, like the light bill, so you can keep that lamp on all the time. Right. <laughs> like they weren't broke. They weren't, they were just cheap. Shout out to mom and dad, though. I don't know if you're going to listen to this, but... Um, <laughs> it's yeah, all I love. I, I, yeah, look, yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving's coming up. Let them in the house, please. Let them in the house. Oh, they, they, don't let me in the house regardless, because they need somebody to wash the damn dishes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's crazy how things that we looked at back then have changed now. Music, like, all right, I'll tell you, I'll tell you straight up. And I know you as a music dude. Yeah. I, I know this. Um, and I'm telling you, I keep it on 90s everything or uh -huh. later. Okay, I'm I'm be real. Um, maybe early 2000s, depending on who it is. If it's Jay-Z, Nas, you know, certain other people, I'll, I'll listen to it. 
but the majority of the new stuff that's out today, I don't, I don't fuck with it. I can't do I, it. I always say I've probably listened to music up until 2006. That's about right. Up until 2006, because like I said, that's when, you know, the whole snap era started coming in and the Laffy Tappies and shit. I'm just like, uh, yeah, it's time for me to bow out gracefully. <laughs> when Future came on the scene, I'm like, I'm good. Right, yeah, it's time for you to bow out gracefully. You're just like, yeah, I tried, but I, yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't do it. It's not for me. You know, I need substance. You know, it's all good if you're making all these strip club songs, but I, I'm not. I'm not a dude that goes to strip club. So you know, all I'm doing is like dancing in the house. You know, and, and it goes but so far. It's just, uh, it's not my jam. Sometimes I need to live vicariously through the music, and that's what we could do when we had the music back then, right? Can't do that shit now. We, we, we can't. We can't feel the whole like. It has nice beats, but they don't have, they don't talk about shit. Like, I still listen to Kendrick Lamar because he's still releasing good stuff. Yeah. I still listen to um, J. Cole Wale every once in a while because they're still releasing good stuff. Yeah, they understand the assignments. Yes. Nas. Oh, Nas. Nas, I feel, I, I feel like Nas, his career got rebirthed because of Hit Boy. It's not because of Hit Boy. It's because people started missing relatability factors in hip hop. I don't know, man. I don't know. I always listen to Nas now. Now well, so do I. But 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 Hit Boy him and Hit Boy were was like a marriage made in heaven in the music world. It, well then again, you gotta understand Nas never had choice beats. Nas yes. Beat. And I was I was talking to my wife about this um yesterday. I'm like I don't know if Nas was just like on the wrong label. And what if he was on Def Jam and he had access to like better beats? You but know, here's the thing. even when he was on Def Jam, he didn't pick great beats. <laughs> sure did. No, it's yeah. true. Like even when he was on Def Jam, he didn't pick great beats. Nas is, has a horrible ear. I hate to say this because that's my dude. Nas just has a horrible ear for beats. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I mean, there's some gems here and there. It just matches up well. Like, I, m- I remember the one that he, d- I-, I forget which one of the uh, Bone Thugs or Harmony guys. It was, I think it was um, Crazy Bone or something like that. But um, if, heaven was a- if Heaven Was Another Way. Yeah. That was perfect. And I'm like, yeah, keep doing that. Then he deviated and he, he went to Godson. I'm like, God damn it. Come on. No, now. Heaven Was On Godson. Oh, it was okay. That was the um, second to last song. Yes, because dance was the last song. Yeah, and dance was just a horrible way to end the album. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> like you know what Nas was to me for the longest time. Nas has always been my you know favorite rapper because I always say I have one A one B Scarface and Nas right. Mm-hmm. But Nas is that artist that ran ninety nine yards with the ball and fumbled on the one yard line every. Oh. Fucking time, yeah. Yeah. but then again, he had a, he was stigmatized for coming out with Illmatic. For that to be your first album, your first album, yeah. and don't get me wrong, I am was good. Um, what came after? Um, what came before? I am. Um, it was written. Yeah, it was written. Was a good second album. You know, you avoid the sophomore slump. And then you come out with Nostradamus. That was trash. Sorry. And that was people trash. start, you know, he started getting lost in the sauce. Because yeah. you gotta understand, Nas has this one problem with what beats sound good to him, he thinks everybody else fucks with. It's not the case. Like, yeah. I still can't listen to You Owe Me to this day. <laughs> you talking about with Genuine? Yeah. <laughs> that was a Timbo beat, too. It, exactly. <laughs> Like you got Timbo's worst beat ever. Yeah, it, it kind of was <laughs> worst beat ever. And then you talked about nonsense on it. Oh and man, the chorus doesn't make no sense. Nope. Say what's your price? Just to back it up, you can hold my ice. Wait a minute, that's prostitution, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to walk up to a woman and just say, "Hey, shorty, say what's your price?" Like. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, there's something's going to happen to your face after that one. Exactly, like <laughs> you're going to get a drink, a uh, hand to the face, going something, a whole glass. Like, maybe that's a nice thing. <laughs> I don't that's, know. Not how the shit, that's not how the shit happens in real life. Yeah, but but it's like the music today. I, I can't I can't roll with it, man. It's not my jam. There's what there's some gems. There's some gems out there. J Cole, as you mentioned before, yeah. J Cole may be ongoing long term because Jay Z can't rap forever. No, he's he's going to be my future. Like let me let me hold on to this. Let me follow this dude because. It it feels like this guy just keeps getting better and better. And I'm like, oh, he can't get no better. Oh, he's like, hold my beer. I'm like, God, right. he, he has beats. He has lyrics. He has the flow. The total package. I'm like, okay, I can roll with him. Kendrick, yes. Wale, sometimes. As long as he ain't on that little, you know, spoken word stuff. I'm about to say, no, it, Wale it, likes crying a lot. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, the fans don't respect me. The fans don't do this. The fans don't do that. Well, just keep doing you. Don't worry yeah. about what the masses say. Do you know why Kendrick is so successful? Because <laughs> he doesn't care about what the fans say. Yeah, like the Pimp Butterfly. Cole, Cole, I I, di- I didn't like it at first, but I kept listening to it. I'm like, oh shit, this is tight. Do you know why um, Cole's so successful? Why? Because he doesn't care what the fans say. Exactly. Exactly. I think Steve Jobs taught everyone that you don't you don't let the your 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 people the, your your um your customers dictate um what you put out. You give them something. You tell them what they want. You know, you you and make it known that your shit is so dope. They didn't know they needed it. Now they can't stop listening to it. I'm gonna say it like this. I said something uh, when my friend Adam's mom passed, and. I think, you know, Kendrick and Cole listen to this. I said, you know, a lot of people just think you're dancing weird. You're not dancing weird at all. You're dancing to the beat of your own drum. That's right. And people will follow suit. Yeah. That's that's where Kendrick and Cole lie. Um, Wale, one of his biggest things is, hold on, there's a siren going by. One of Wale's biggest things is he wants to fit. So he's going to jump yeah. up on the latest trend. He's going to jump up on this, jump up on that. When all you have, you're a dope lyricist. Please stay that way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, he was, he was one of the first people. He, he was one of the first people to be on Rock Nation. And he left it over some, he got his feelings hurt over some BS. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm like, chill, yeah, I man. Watched, I watched his Drink Champs interview. And the thing about it was, you know, just like, uh, you know, like, I felt like they weren't accepting lots of this, lots of that. And, you know, I want to get paid first, you know, when it comes to my thing. I was on the tour with J. Cole, and he was the headliner because it's J. Cole. <laughs> right. Like, the a prodigy. Yes. Like, this is J. Cole. You're sitting yeah. there getting mad that J. Cole's the headliner. He deserves to be. He's worked his ass off. Yeah, and I remember he did. In 2013, what I call the greatest month in hip hop, because Wale came out, J. Cole came out, um, Jay Z and Kanye both, you know, came out also. It was the first right. time that a hip hop artist replaced each other at number one on the Billboard 200 four weeks in a row. That was a hot year. Yeah. And do you know what happened? What's that? Wale complained. You just had a album debut at number one. And the first thing you do is, yeah, man, I mean, everybody else did it, but, you know, they didn't put the soul and passion into their albums like I did. I'm hey, sorry. Come what? Come on. The only on. album that didn't deserve to go number one, in my opinion, was Jesus. And that was Kanye West. It went number one solely on Kanye's name. Can we can we talk about... Um... I ain't gonna call him Jesus, but can we can we talk about Kanye for a minute? Absolutely. I feel the last good, great album. I'm gonna say his best album and his last fire album. I'm not talking about Watch the Throne because Jay Z was on that too. I'm talking about my beautiful dark fantasy. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. 
Yes. And I, if you ever listened to the first year of my podcast, we discussed that album track by track. A masterpiece. We, me and Two Gun used to do an album, um, a segment called Classic Sundays, where we would yeah. just talk about a classic album. Even mm-hmm. though Two Gun did not want to talk about that album, I said, this album has to be discussed. Yeah. yeah. One so, of my favorite albums of all time. When we talked about My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, I felt more in love with the album, reviewing the album, mm-hmm. than anything. And at that point, the album's been out at that point for like five years. Yeah. Five, six years at that point. I think it's 10 years this year. Damn. Yeah. We're getting old. <laughs> We're getting Damn. old, but here's the thing, though. In my opinion, he will never be able to match that again. No. No, I don't know if it was the Kardashians or I don't know, but no, no, never again. He, he, he tries, he has good songs, but a put together album and people got pissed off at me for putting this on, on Twitter. They were like, they're trying to talk me like his last album. I'm like, that's, that's fucking trash, dude. I can't, I can't even make it. Yeah. I can't fuck it. I can't fuck with that shit. Well, here's here's the thing about Donda. What pissed me off about it? Hype. For nothing. Yeah. All that hype for I, an album I played that week until Drake came out. <laughs> and I hate Drake. For anybody who I died. Uh, yeah. I, it's anybody, like I don't want to like him. Yeah. For anybody who knows me, it's not the fact that I have a problem with Drake. I just don't like that nigga. And that's just I, I feel you. I don't either. I don't know There's what just, it is. I just don't know what it is. I, I just don't like him. There's something about Drake's music that I cannot stand. I can listen to some of his songs. I can't listen to three songs in a row. After that, I'm like, I'm done. At least you can listen to some. I can't. What is it about him that, like... But here's the thing about Drake. When he does come out with an album, I will listen to it on the first day. He gets a stream from me. (laughs) Yeah. But And the thing about it is, I try so hard to like it but i can't yeah Yeah. there's just something about a drake album that doesn't resonate with me even it's not it's not for us though i don't think it's for us it's for i think it's i think it's i think his his soul demographic and there might be some carryover i think his soul demographic is females um yeah females and i hate to use this word females and posers yeah 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 and the, and I feel like Wale's a little bit of that. No, um, well, by accident. Wale started out with here's here's something that a lot of rap you know rap heads or hip hop heads don't know. Wale started out with go go music. Yeah, because he's from DC. Yeah, yeah. He started out with go go music. It just so happened that he could flow. Mm-hmm. So when I first heard Wale, it was on some damn <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I'm just like, all right, this, you know, he got some little flow. He's cool, but this ain't my cup of tea because I already know what you did before. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So now you're getting mad that you're not fully getting accepted in the hip hop community because, nigga, you were a go go artist to start off with. (laughs) What did Jay Z say? You can't change a player's game in the ninth inning. Oh, that is fact. That is so fact. Yeah. So yeah. you came to fame as a go go artist, and all of a sudden you were one of Double XL's um, freshman 10. Yeah. And now you're just like, you know, I'm the dopest rapper alive. You're not. Your first single had Lady Gaga on it. And That's you right. Even, and you were Poker even Face? Getting, no, not Poker Face. It was, um, what's it called? It was a co- song called Chillin'. I don't think I remember that. Yeah, okay. your first single had Lady Gaga on the hook. Yeah. And you no. weren't even spitting you weren't even spitting subpar bars on there. <laughs> like one of his lines is like, you say you got a lot of shoes, but I got a lot. Like, what? <laughs> Look up the song, I promise you. You know, you know my favorite song that he's on of all time is that Roscoe Dash song. Oh, no hands. Yeah. I'm telling you, that's my shit. <laughs> My favorite Wale song is a song called Black Heroes. Hmm, I gotta look that up. That was on the, the last complete song on the Gifted album. 
It's a song okay. called Black Heroes. And just lyrically sharp. He was lyrically mm-hmm. sharp. The beat was good. Stokely from um, Mint Condition did the Ooh. hook at the end. You had me at Stokely. Yeah. Stokely from Mint Condition did the hook at the end. Yeah. And just his subject matter in that song was super dope. And so when he came out with the um the matrimony album, when down had the matrimony, the um album about nothing, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna sit there and lie. I was just like, you know what? I'm still high off this black heroes. Let me go and pay this, you know, pay this attention. Dumbass move. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass move. It ain't your fault though. Right. Ain't your but, fault. Yeah, man. So getting older, um, it is a thing. We we feel we're wiser now. Right. Um we we're, we're doing good things. And, you know, I'm glad to see that you're doing great. Your podcast is amazing. Thank I you. I listen thank as you. much as I can. Thank you. Like, you know, I want to tell you a vision that I have. Real I'm quick. And this this is the first time I'm gonna say this on wax. I want um, because I created this that, that small private group that we have on Facebook. Correct. I want to um, get to a point that we collectively have a larger um, uh, mission to, to 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 do this podcast thing to the, in a way that we do mass collaboration and big up each other, and we eventually get to a point that we have a little empire. I don't know if we I ain't know if we're gonna make any money off this thing now. I ain't, I ain't gonna right. say we're gonna make any money. But, but but right before I go, let me just go ahead and say this. If you podcast for the money, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Am I amen. That's like, right. When I do my podcast, I just want people to hear me talk fly shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah man. So like if you're in podcasting for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason because the thing about it is you're gonna let money um disillusion you. And if you don't get the listens or the follows and stuff like that, and you're not making any money, you're not gonna want to do your podcast. You know what I mean? Amen. It ain't about it ain't about the listen, it ain't about the followers, it's about you speaking your truth. You know what I mean? Exactly. And that's why me and two gun do our shit, because the thing about it is, you know, like wanted to just have a platform so we can just talk shit and we've been talking shit for four years you've been talking shit for 11 (laughs) yeah y'all do talk some shit that's fun though i'm glad that y'all find me on your pod i hope that um we do more collaborations and i know you gotta go um so tell people where to find you real quick no problem um you can find me on ig at digger 2k6 I have two Facebook pages. For those who know me personally, you can add the Daniel Laurie page. That's D-A-N-I-E-L-L-A-U-R-I-E. For those who just want the podcast, I you know what I call my second identity is Digga Jones, D-I-G-G-A-J-O-N-E-S. And anywhere you listen to podcasts, if you just type in Digga Jones, you'll see Digga Jones and Two Gun Tony's News and Views pop up. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so having much. Me. Thank you for Thank having you for me. so much for being on the pod, man. You know, no problem. But all right, family. Thank you so much. Be blessed, man. All much right, love. All right. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I need to